In our last video, we, uh, we looked at solving two-step algebraic equations. And uh, in this vid video, we're going to uh, continue solving multi-step equations. But uh, I want to look at one of the problems that we did in the last video, and that is 6 times x minus 7 equals 21. And what we did was we looked at our x, and we said, what's happening to x? We're subtracting 7, then we're multiplying by 6 to get 21. So in order to undo this process, first we divided by 6, then we added 7, and what we found was x equals 10.5. That is, that is in my mind, that is the best way to solve that problem. It is not the only way to solve that problem, though. There's another way to solve that problem, and that is by using the process known as distribution. Okay? What do we have when we have 6 times and then something in parentheses. Well, what you do is you distribute the 6. And what that means is you multiply 6 times x, and then you multiply 6 times 7. Actually, better yet, think of this as a negative 7. Think of it as x plus negative 7. 6 times x is 6x. Six, 6 times negative 7 is negative 42. So we end up with 6x minus 42 equals 21. Okay. Now, we still have a two-step problem, but now it's a two-step problem that we're a little more familiar with. We'd look at this and we'd say, what's happening to x? It's being multiplied by 6, then subtracting 42. So I'm going to add 42 to both sides. And I get 6x, these cancel out, equals 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 4 is 6. So 6x equals 63. And to solve this, I would then divide both sides by 6. And I get x equals, uh, let's see, 63 over 6. They're both divisible by 3. That's like saying uh, 21 over 2. And 21 divided by 2 is 10.5. So you can see we get the exact same answer either way. The distributive property, although we didn't have to use it here, the distributive proper property ends up being an extremely powerful tool that we can use to solve equations. So now let's use that tool to solve a substantially more complicated uh, problem. Okay, now, in the past, up until now, we've always looked at our equations and we've always said, okay, what's happening to the unknown? Well, the problem here is, blah, there's more than one unknown out here. There's an unknown over here and there's an unknown over here. So it's kind of hard to answer that question, what's happening to it, because you have it existing in two different locations. So what we have to do is, we have to collapse everything, we have to combine everything, and so there's only one unknown that we see in our equation. And the way that we do that is by basically two processes. One is distributing, and the other one is combining like terms, which is kind of like doing distributing backwards. I'll show you what it means. So first let's distribute this two. So we have two times x, we have two times one. I know what that is. That's 2x plus 2 times 1 is 2, plus x equals 29. Okay, now, how many x terms do I have here? I've got this one, and I've got this one. 2x plus x. Think of the x as being something. This is two of them, and this is one more. So if I have two x's here, and I'm adding another x, that gets me 3x. So I get 3x plus 2 equals 29. Let me stop for a second. I told you that this is sort of like the, the uh, doing the distributed property backwards. Let me show you exactly what I mean. Uh, 2x plus x is like saying, um, sorry, x times 2 plus 1. See what I mean? x times 2 is 2x, x times 1 is x, and 2 plus 1, well that's just 3x. So I end up with 2x plus x being 3x by doing the distributive property backwards, okay? And this, this process going from here to here is known as combining like terms because the x terms are like terms. This term here has no unknown associated with it. It has no unknown that's being multiplied by it. And so we just call it a constant term. This is our constant term and these are our x terms. Uh, there are lots of other terms you can also have that are not like terms with these, but we'll get into those later. So, back to this problem. Now it's down to a two-step problem. We know how to solve these. Um, adding two, so that means I'm going to subtract two from both sides. 
I'm also multiplying by 3. Why did I subtract 2? Because that's the second step that's happening. First, x is being multiplied by 3, then you're adding 2. So you undo the last step first. Uh, these cancel out, and I'm left with 3x. 29 minus 2 is 27. And 3 times what number equals 27? I believe that would be 9, because you just divide both sides by 3. Okay? Uh, is it true? I don't know. Let's plug it in. Uh, 2 times 9 plus 1. That's like saying 2 times 10 plus 9 is, well, that's just 20 plus 9. That's just 29. And hey, 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 29. That's exactly what I wanted. So yes, it works.